Hi guys, it's Snake, the uh, creator of uh, View of the Phoenix Trees. And one of the rewards is that I'll write you a customized poem. Um, whatever subject matter you want, give me two weeks, I'll write something for you, and I'll perform it. Um, and just so you can get a flavor of what I can write, what I can do as a spoken word performance artist, uh, I'm gonna perform poem for you. This one's a bit longer than the stuff I'll probably write for you, but it'll, it'll give you a flavour. Uh, it's my love for comics, and it's called A Life in Panels and Pages. So, I've been into comics since I was a kid, before all this Marvel DC adaptation bullshit hit. Forget film and TV, moving images, it's all about the unified synergy of words and pictures. A literary super team up, creating fictions to rapture imaginations. Through school uniform and black tie work, I've always had my head between pages, forged with the intelligent craftsmanship of artist, writer, creatives. These 24 page coloured bits of paper have shared space with me through the ages, but there are four landmark reads that bookmark my life in stages. First comic I'd like to mention is the dysutopian political page turner Trans Metropolitan, with a futuristic Hunter S. Thompson as its main character. I brought this comic with me, luckily, on hour plus long haul journeys to work at a call centre company as a customer service monkey the other side of the city. Cattle cramp carriages and commuter silences faded into the background, with my imagination spellbound. Because these comics are more than just paper and ink, they're linked to a safe space where my head can be and wait for the darker things on my plate to dissipate. My second selection is the zombie survival saga of the walking dead, which swam in my slipstream across two different decades as separate reading events. I began reading when I first, my hopes of a film career got dashed by the blood on the windshield of a car crash. And on the rebound, found work at an obscene bar and grill team whose employment stunk like a scorched earth slaughter regime. A neighboring graveyard would give me garden harmony to read and sit on my tea break back sunk against the bark of a maple tree's trunk. Because these comics are more than just paper and ink, they're linked to a safe space where my head can think and wait for the darker things on the plate to dissipate. The next time I picked up The Walking Dead was a million miles from home, in Melbourne, Australia on a working holiday visa on my own. I was stuck between the termite crawling walls of a hostel, with new strangers coming and going with the consistency of a brothel. Each room had bodies piled high overhead, so I'd find privacy in pages with the curtains drawn to my bunk bed. Some nights I'd escape on the city's tram lines, comic under my arm, to meet strangers on dates and stay out till dawn's morning would wake. Because these comics are more than just paper and ink, they're linked to a safe space where my head can think and wait for the darker things on my plate to dissipate. The next comic book is the anti-superhero commentary called The Boys, which occupied a large portion of my young adult life. Background noise. I bought the first 2 dollars issue on my first week of university when my leaves dressed in an autumn-coloured burgundy. For seven years each month, this comic kept me company, like the clockwork visits of a separated parent, mindful of custody. Through sandpaper breakups on campus halls and through hangover wake-up calls on shared house kitchen floors. Because these comics are more than just paper and ink, they're linked to a safe space where my head can think and wait for the darker things on my plate to dissipate. My final comic is the fantasy western known as Preacher, 
with sunburnt pages encapsulate the perfect story for any reader. I grew up reading this comic on my cousin's acrylic carpet floor after borrowing it from his extensive comic collection drawer. While him and his collective crew would play games of FIFA World Tour, I'd be left in the corner and ignored, a cast out orphan, but delving deep into this comic's allure. And as I grew older, my love for this comic endured. Reading it became an annual ritual of the tallest order. My usual plan is a Christmas read as the snow paints the land, wearing striped fingerless gloves to warm my hands. Because friends and relationships come and go, but comics have never left me in a park on my own. For a lone ranger like me, prone to isolation necessity, our relationship is a lifelong fixture. I can always curl into a corner with pages between my fingers, to be enveloped in a resplendent world of words and pictures. Because these comics are more than just paper and ink, the panels and pages are synced to the lifeblood coursing through my veins, so we travel in parallel lanes, the pain and mundane of the day-to-day -day strains, and journey forward through gale force, future winds and rain, until the end of my life's reign. Thank you.